Hello and welcome to my podcast, Conversations with Cornelius, where I, Cornelius Patrick O'Sullivan, discuss, chat and hypothesize on all things from fatherhood, marriage, comedy and everything else in between. From time to time, there will be special guests, but mostly it's going to be me and some regular contributors, including my main squeeze, Noel Patricia O'Sullivan, a.k.a. The Wife. So sit back, relax and enjoy Conversations with Cornelius! Who are they against you? Uh, fucking... I don't know. Who are they against? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cornelius. I'm your host, Cornelius Patrick O'Sullivan, and uh, it's the sports podcast. Uh, audio only today, guys. Uh, computer has taken a vacation from our lives, uh, so there will be no... Uh, I can actually see it here, the startup light is on, of the monitor, the screen itself. But yeah, that's just the screen, but that's the, just the, screen, yeah. the actual body of the computer has gone to computer graveland, and... Uh, it's finished. We need to get a new computer, so there's holes in the roofs of the house, the wallpaper's falling down, the computers aren't working. Are we kind giving up? We kind probably of, yeah, should. It's we, kind of a state of disrepair, really, this, yeah, this room. We probably should. I have a patron as well there, lads, if you want to put a bit of fucking paper on the wall. Uh, link in the bio. Go. It's Would you not uh, throw a little picture off so they can see how um, run down this facility I is? I could do that now, but Noelle would definitely leave me. And then I'd have absolutely no hope left in life whatsoever because she's the only thing that's keeping me alive. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's a fair point, actually, yeah. Um, so I suppose we just need to get the kind of the grisly details out of the way from the start. We had a little bet. We had a little... Bet and what was the bet, Pete? Well, it was a GA game. Um, fuck it, I lost unfortunately. Galway were playing against Monaghan, wasn't it? Armagh, wasn't it? Well, Armagh, oh, sorry, Armagh, yeah. yeah. What am I saying? I just got caught up in the and this is this is a group stage game uh, a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago, was it? This was actually a knockout game, wasn't no, it? No, it wasn't a knockout game. This is sports podcast. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to find what the fucking thing was here. Uh, I'm sure it was... because no, Ar- they're both still in the championship, so it couldn't be knockout. <laughs> it was Armagh, but I, for some reason, I have... What am I trying to fucking do here? I don't know. RT, RTE uh, News. No, I'm blaming you for this, because you actually um, you jumped on the plane, headed off to Paris there for a week, and you discombobulated me. I'm actually quite discombobulated myself. But to see how... Oh, how much of a gentleman I am, man of honour. I said bought the cash. I don't know why. I'm it was Galway, all right, though. It was results and fixtures, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, and it was, it, was, uh, it was football, wasn't it? It was a football game, yeah. Yeah, we'll find it here now. We'll find it here now. I, uh, fucking hell, like, we should know this, like. Where we've This is one of, this is, like, I'm trying to get people to sign up to the Patreon here. I don't even know. It was a good start. It was, it, it was you pleading. Yeah. You know. No, in fairness, to Galway, right? Um, they're not out of the championship. They're actually fucking. They beat Dublin last week. We'll talk about that there in a minute. Now we'll do. Um, it was definitely um, quarterfinal. Arma were playing against. Oh, it was Galway Monaghan. You did say that actually. Yeah. You said that earlier on. You did say that. Um, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, uh, yeah. Are you sure? Or was it Galway Arma? Was it Galway Arma? I thought I thought it was a. I thought it was Galway Arma, and they're both still in the championship. We we're actually right from the get-go, man. This is an unbelievable sports podcast, look. It was Galway Arma, and it was in the final game of the round robin, and Arma won by a point. Okay. And it was because I fancy, I fancy. Um, Could you do me a favor now? Could you scoot down and let's have a look at the provincial kind of um, provisional quarterfinals? Uh, Ross Common and Kevin, Kevin Tyrone against Cork, Donegal against, against Clare. Clare, Derry against Westmead. Yeah, I think you're right. But yeah. Either way, I lost the ten euro. Yeah, give it to me. Well, you know. Where is it? Is this all in coins? It's all in... Uh, why are you you've going yet, to try your nose up to two euro coins? I no, won't. No. But no, I'll tell you what I... Two, four, six, eight, and there you go, boy. A man of my word. Fucking hell, where were these coins? And I probably up your hole last <laughs> night. <laughs> Wash my hands. Um, look, I'll take it, but you still haven't given... Like, I mean... Like, thank you. You've, t- you've taken out how much money I'm up 15 be? now. 15 I'm up 15, euro. right? Mm. And maximum that we can bet on this podcast is a tenner. So you have to win twice to feel how I feel, which is amazing. I feel amazing. You feel amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you feel amazing. Yeah. We may not be able to remember the results because we're gone. And that's the thing with sport as well. It just flies on, like. To be honest, we're watching, there's so much sport down between the European Championships. We got the GA, which is football. We got the hurling. And then there's what you call, there's, there was rugby league on over in the Australia. Tour de France. Tour de France is on. The, okay. first, the first lad from Africa won two stages, actually. Where's he from? Most, is it? I was looking at the flag yesterday. Oh, God, show up the flag. I'm actually really yeah. good at flags. Uh, okay, one second now. 
Will you have to talk while I'm doing this now? You see, this yeah. Is, are, are you actually watching the the Tour de France? I I watched. I tell you now, I was in the on the treadmill inside in town in the gym yesterday for twenty minutes. 20 so minutes. I watched twenty minutes. What, what pace was the treadmill at? Uh, do you know? Was it working? Like were you? Was it? You know, walking. It, you know, walking. Right. Sl- slower than walking. So if you multiplied walking by 0.05, <laughs> that's the pace. Were that you sweating though? I Yeah, I was, I'm going to get back into it now. Yeah, no, no, like, no. Jeez, I won't um, fucking what dog look, you there. What, what am I looking up here? <laughs> so we're looking at George George friends. <laughs> See, there's no way we're going to remember, remember a fucking bet. Guys, if you're so. looking for up-to-date, <laughs> insightful uh, uh, insights on this sports podcast... Let's be honest, nobody was following it. We could have said any bit. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Not many people watch the Tour de France. But what, what is good here now, right, by us doing a little segment on the Tour de France, mm. we're going to throw ye out a couple of nuggets, right, that we're getting directly from Google, right? <laughs> and they're going straight into your ear holes. And later tonight, when you're talking to a friend and he's annoying you with a little bit of ex- like a bit of knowledge, mm. you can go, yeah, 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 well, like, you know, fucking Sean Kelly's going well in the Tour de France. <laughs> he's, the, he's, the boat. he's commentating, isn't he? Sean no, Kelly, Stephen Orch is commentating. Kelly used to commentate Kelly. as well. Could be Kelly, could be yeah. actually Kelly, yeah. I, my favourite thing Sean Kelly used to say down through the years was, Held the Verden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up the mountains that's there him, now that's, with Held the Verden. I watch a Eurosport and that's definitely him. He still has it. Well, the only reason now I know how to talk like uh, Sean Kelly is he's from a place called Carrick on Shore, right? And Carrick on Shore is where my mother's from. And I have a lot of aunties and uncles from Carrick. Carrick is what we call it. And that's the accent from Carrick it's and Shewa. It's a desperate accent, isn't it? It's... Like if they're about to die any second. Man, that's... No, my mother has lost it, so... Like... Mentally like a, or...? Well, you know, just the accent. Oh, okay, like, yeah. You know, Sorry, I thought you were going to... Um, referring to something <laughs> <else>. <laughs> She is mentally cognizant, mind guy. Yeah, I know, that's fair going. But I'm looking for the top stories here now. Yeah, so there's this lad there from Africa. He's the first African... Um, Athlete to win a stage in the Tour de France, so cycling. Yeah, it's class actually. I actually love watching it. You know, I, I won't be too. Uh, oh, this is great! Now I'm going to get the fucking flag here now. Yeah. So Jonas Vingard is. Uh, oh yeah, so there's Danish lad. Yeah. He's up. I was looking at the flags yesterday. This is the fellow who won the um the thing yesterday. Tadjar Pogacar. Yeah. So get that right now, lads. When you're fucking talking to Johnny at the pitch tonight at the under eights training, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, have you seen the Euros? No, no. I was watching. Actually, I'm actually I'm better." Than you, I, I watch better sports like the Tour de France. Did you see Tadger Pogacar? Actually, currently there's a documentary at the moment on uh, Netflix following these two lads. Actually, the lads that you just mentioned, Tadger the, Pogacar. Their rivalry there, yeah. Someone just after coming to the fucking front door there now. We might get an audience to this podcast. Yeah, you do. You're doing live podcast later on. The I am. I'm doing a live podcast. I can you talk away there because I actually have to fucking get that. Door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. matter. You keep talking. There. Okay, so I am going to um, speculate about the Tour de France. So you can often hear these lads on uh, Eurosport chatting away about the mountains, about the scenery. And I'm going to do something likewise here where Cornelius has gone. Now, just to mention as well, he, his house is in absolute uh, state. So if you are go- if you guys are going to contribute to the Patreon page, it would be much appreciated because... Oh, the page. oh, he's... The page, right? Okay, he's back. He's a yeah, package in his hand. Cancel all their pay- if you've signed up for a Patreon, cancel it, lads, right? Because the wife is still buying stuff. No, Just no, in fairness, I was trying to drum up support for you. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> So that's a shame that you, you went that direction. But she sure. No, she like, like the fucking papers coming off the walls. There's holes in, and on the ceiling and in the ground. I could have over embellished while you were away, but you, you know, know, I was going to go further. But and you. yes, there's some sort of an item of clothing <laughs> coming in the door from Amazon there. Now, oh, let's have a look at this. Yeah. Very good. Debenhams. You know, oh, I Debenhams. know it's not for me if it's from Debenhams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I'd rather go to hell yeah, than go there. Yeah, Debenhams. Oh, yeah. this is from some... Oh, yeah, it's from fucking some place in England. Yeah. Friday. England. She's buying stuff. She's given the fucking queen... She's given the queen our shillings. And still there's no paper, no uh, wallpaper here. Paper on the wall. Look, lads, yeah. actually, genuinely, sign up to the patron there, will you? Noel's going to have to fucking charts all together with the fucking clothes. Yeah, I mean, that's very good. I was just uh, telling the lads there how there's commentators on your sport. They can just, you know, chat idly where about the mountains, about the different fucking countryside in France, and should literally chat about nothing for three hours. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's such a good skit and have to crack. Yeah. Uh, uh, where's this fella from fucking where's this uh, I think that f- okay scroll way down well it would have been the stage over the weekend so there was two stages I think alright guys so look if you're looking for the information you've come to the wrong podcast just go to Google Google what did I say in Google no I'm telling them oh uh, yeah yeah, yeah we're not going to do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Put down this, <laughs> shut down that laptop there. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> no interest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, that's the Tour de France. Watch it if you want to. <laughs> it's on Eurosport. <laughs> Sean Kelly is, is, is commentating, talking about the mountains <laughs> and the countryside. <laughs> There's fuck all going on for three hours, isn't my guy just <laughs> And usually the fella that's taking the most amount of drugs is the winner. We couldn't even pronounce the two main fucking cyclists <laughs> in the Tour de France. <laughs> well, v- look, Verdegard outsprints Podcar to win Epic Tour stage. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was the 11th stage. So if you want to talk about something, lads, if you're looking for a bit of fucking, look, we better give them something, a nugget, right? <laughs> v- <laughs> Vinigard outsprinted Podgar. Paga car to win an epic tour stage, and this was an epic one. And Sherlock, you know they're all on drugs. Look at the fucking jerseys they're wearing. Luke goes around. See, look, he looks like he's a vagina there. Yeah, and our jaws lads. Where just, are they putting their cocks? They're just built for cycling. They have a little hole in the saddle as well, don't they? Some of them they have this little fucking hole so the saddle isn't complete, so they can put their junk, their junk, and it slips in. They can shit into the hole. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. I was not going there. No, no, I just say so, so there's some saddles where there's a little hole in the saddle. Yeah. So you just oh, junk is in your yeah, dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I was like, we were in the hole. My, my head, my head went to. So they're going to be in the middle, middle of Tour de France. They're going to somehow t- take down their pants. They go for a shit. <laughs> no, there might be a little <laughs> reclaps, like a, a, a collapsible hole on the bottom of their pants. I don't know technology, man. And they're going to smell we like live in shit the 90s for the now. Next two hours. <laughs> But sure, didn't Sonia have an old fucking incident one year when she was having a run? She didn't. She had to stop the race. She didn't, she, she, she didn't go running for the next two hours. <laughs> Smelling like shit. Oh, poor Sonia. Yeah, that was very unlucky. Uh, but anyway, that's the Tour de France. That's Vinny Gard out <laughs> for its car to win a big tour stage. And actually, like cycling, but you fucking. Uh... <laughs> I no, I, I I was watching. I'm big into now. Twenty minutes on the treadmill yesterday, man. <laughs> I actually, and I'm not joking. I actually saw this right. This is the yeah, the yeah. race that was on yesterday. Very good. And. My observation from my in-depth analysis mm. on the treadmill, right, as I was pounding in the treadmill, was that there was it was just a screen, obviously, because I couldn't, I wasn't tuned into the audio of it, and uh, there was they were all bunched together. They're all the cyclists. The peloton, yeah. Were, what's a peloton? Peloton is like a group that are behind. We say the the leading party, so it's the main bulk of the uh, of the group. So it could be like I don't know thirty. Like I'm again, I'm not an expert in in cycling, but it's the main group of cyclists within the stage. So it could be we'd say these two lads leading, and it could be a small group chasing them, and then there'll be a big group, and the big group is known as the peloton. But how did do they not all start together at the same time? They do, yeah. But there's going to be surging. There's going to be lads breaking. There's going to be counter attacks attacking. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't just all start and finish at the same time. I well, do, what, what, well they obviously don't finish at the same time. Smart <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But like they do, they start at the same time. They do, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's actually no official race. It would all start together, and it was actually just time. Like, how do they get away? How was like, we'll be together well, them this week? So lads, ye fucking. Well, there's there's there. there's what you call it. There's the lads who specialize in climbing. So there could be a climbing section where you award maybe a, a bonus points or or, or, or time for uh, completing the climb first and stuff like that. So there'll be breakaways and then there'll be more talented cyclists who can get away from the group. So would they, they all start, like this is like... Yeah, I, I, think, I think at the start of a, of a stage, it's a very, um, we say, low intensity. So they're going at a very easy pace. And straight away, the, the climbers will say, right, okay, they're going easy. We're good at climbing. Let's get well, the fuck yeah, at the start, it's uh, everyone's together and then they initially break away, people making attacks and then there's teams working together. So if you have a cyclist who's the top man, um, then obviously he's going to draft behind his teammates. Yeah. So obviously, if you're drafting behind your teammates, you're going to expend less energy. Less cycling. energy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's what happens there. Coasting. So I, do it, I often do it when I'm going to gigs in Dublin. I'll see a Sentra <laughs> truck and I'll go in behind it. It actually saves you money on the fucking fuel, you know, with Noel spending habits and the house falling down. Yeah. I, need to be, I need to be saving money. No, you, know? you actually do. I think that's very wise. Yeah. And very so I'm in behind these trucks. It is called coal. I do, but that, it does save, genuinely, it does mm. save on, on fuel as well. Like So uh, as energy is fuel and fucking yeah. they're trying to save their So that's what, that's what happened there. It's actually a really good sport. If you sit down and actually listen to them and the way they can chat away, the commentaries are fantastic. Give it a go. That's what I say. Yeah. Uh, no, I will as well, actually, because I've like uh, I I was uh, boring and all as it should appear to be. Mm. They were all in just a big group. Yeah. And they were cycling through the French countryside. Yeah. And um, that's all they were doing. And yeah. it was And uh, what I did notice was there was loads of cars behind them, and there was loads of cars in front of them. Mm. And one fella had had an injury, right? Yeah. 
and this is what I this is something that I was thinking about, right? One fella had an injury on his elbow. Yeah. And he was at the back of the group of the Peloton, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh we'll say maybe five yards off the main group, right? Or five five meters off yeah, the main yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had his elbow on this car, right? Mm. Which was propelling along at a speed. Yeah. Okay. He wasn't cycling. He's el- or he was sorry, he was cycling, he was moving his legs, but he was going a lot faster than what his legs were moving now, yeah, you yeah. know. The car was propelling him mostly and he was getting some work done to his elbow. Yeah. If he goes on then and wins the Tour de France, that's <laughs> fucking not fair. Do you know what they do that as well when someone in the car is passing somebody a drink, they'll yeah. hold on to the drink for maybe two or three seconds longer. Yeah. So they're to get extra propulsion from the car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens a small but this I, fucker, he was on the car for a three or four <laughs> minutes, my guy. I like if he wins the Tour de France, like, that's doping, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mechanical doping, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I should call that. Yeah. yeah that happens a lot actually it's actually very very funny but uh, you should listen to the what you call it the, um, the director of sport the sport directive and they'll be fucking encouraging their the top cyclists and oh it's really aggressive fucking go 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 alley 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 I'll be fucking and blinding and getting them up so they're, they're obviously communication with a couple of their we cyclists we should go to a stage next year it's I say it'd be brilliant I would like to go to one of the stages up the mountains yeah because cause they're not they're not going fast yeah they're, but they're there's a little bit more of a chance of you actually... Do you know when they're coming out? Can you yeah. run onto the road and slap their back still? Jesus, lads, they're literally... I'd I say, wouldn't do that, no, that'd be a, f- a foot away from them, throwing f- flags around fucking... It's one or two times in the, the cyclists, they'll, they'll even they'll smack a spectator, get them out of the way. Yeah. Or they'll, they'll well, right, rightly so. Oh, yeah, 100%. Imagine you're fucking bearing down on golf, two two minutes into injury time, Narcot final, yeah. you and the goalie, and Johnny Murphy fucking runs across from the pitch to give you a fucking... Go on! Yeah. Go on, boy! Fucking bury it! They fucking, they fucking love it. The Dutch fans love it. The Germans... Yeah. It's, just, it's brilliant. And have we any fucking skin in the game at the moment? Sean is doing the... There's game. a fella there, is it Hayes, his name? Is it Brian Hayes or something like that? So he's there, there. He's corner forward for Cork he, last Sunday as well. Right? Maybe I'm getting mixed up with names. <laughs> no, but just... <laughs> I think I'm man of the match in the fucking All Ireland. Could you Google that? Could you, is, is there a Hayes for, um, or is it something like that for um, Irish well, cyclists? I'll tell you what I'll do now is I'll put Brian Hayes in to Google, right? Brian, is that with a Y or an I? B R I A N Hayes. I'm sure it's. And cyclist, type in Hayes. Hayes now has come up here now, and they have him down as a Gaelic footballer, but he's a fucking hurler. Brian Hayes. Oh, that's the first fella anyway Brian Hayes he's yeah. the Cork hurler the fellow who he got man of the match there the weekend against Limerick he scored 1-3 or was it 1-4 Brian Hayes cyclist he, but yeah well type in uh, Irish Tour de France cyclist It'll oh I think up. he's Cork don't tell me he's Cork oh no he's not Cork that's fucking wouldn't be unreal if he was Cork Brian Hayes you're, I think you're right Brian Hayes yeah. is a road racing cyclist from United States active 1996 oh, no. and 1996 different Brian Hayes different Brian Hayes yeah <laughs> <laughs> Minister happy. Brian Hayes welcomes Europe like the Minister Brian Hayes joined members of the Dublin cycling campaign yeah let's right? think him in let's think him uh, in I don't think it's him I, uh, Brian Hayes Strava cycling oh here we go this could be him he's hardly further down than that He's done no miles. <laughs> <laughs> He's got 85 followers. He's following. This is a random for a fella from Strava. <laughs> Who's Strava? Strava is just an app that you can record your workouts. Any fucking... Uh, Joe Soap could be uh, he, he put up his workout of no miles. What a... Fu- well done. Yeah, I know. He's flying that late, yeah. Okay, sixth place finish. Hang on. Hang on. One second. Oh, here we are. Lads, we don't give up on this podcast. Sixth place finish for Irish cyclists on final day. What year now is this? We better get the fucking year right here before we start. 2024 January so is this indoors that's indoors that's yeah that's a track yeah maybe he's an indoor cyclist this Brian Hayes character that we've no, just do you know what across. that could be wrong with the name <laughs> <laughs> Sixth place finish for Irish cyclists and final day of the European Championships I think you might be wrong here now I'll tell you what you do type in Tour de France and type in uh, current Irish cyclist in Tour de France yeah and he should pop up well, but he's it. actually a decent cyclist like he, he could Tour be in Tour de France t- Irish cyclist no we're fucking Brian Healy Felix. Brian Healy that's the one is that him yeah that's Brian Healy yeah. so let's have a look at this Brian Healy character yeah, well first of all I don't like his rig out he's got a fucking pink helmet and a and look at this racket now the gloves are seamless it's a onesie it's a onesie yeah aerodynamics all the gloves is that what it is aerodynamics I'd say it's, he's a time trial bike there by the looks of it so he's in that crouch position he'd want to be doing a lot of fucking yoga at night time to yeah. fucking see the flexion there he's back yeah yeah to try and Chorus. Do you know, wouldn't you? I'd say yoga would actually help cyclists in oh, a very they're, big they're way. They're unbelievable. They get uh, fucking uh, rub downs. Uh, they're continually fucking, their mobility is very good. Like They're, they're, they're crazy. Has to be. Has to be yeah. Has You're to in be. that position for so long. Yeah. 
So let's talk about this fella, right, guys? So this is Ben Healy, ben right? Healy. I mean, I got a brain. I got a B and a H. I got yeah. the initials already. You 23. Got, well, you said Brian Hayes, and it's actually <laughs> Ben Healy. So you got very little of it right, really. You, 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 right? But at the same time, you had more information than I had about it. So, uh, well, ben you he- found some fella from Strava with no miles up. <laughs> if we were going to go with that. <laughs> Ben Healy feeling strong as he pursues stage win. The 23-year-old Irish has been competitive in the hardest race in cycling. With confidence on the up, Wednesday could be a key day for Ben Healy. One second now, this is July. This is true. This is, yeah, fuck it. This yeah, is the no, Tour de France, yeah? Him. Yeah, no, it's definitely him. Could be a key date in Ben Healy's debut in the Tour de France. The Irishman has impressed thus far and said during Monday's rest day that stage 11 is the next on his radar. Ninth in Friday's time trial and fifth Oh no, sorry. And a fine, f- yeah, and fifth on Sunday's gravel road stage. Healy might have won the latter had his attacks in this chess like finale found even a momentary pause from his rivals. The timing of this surge didn't quite click, but to be in the hunt at the end of one of the race's most dramatic stages was a big boost for morale. That's. Beautifully done. <laughs> yeah, I was like I was there. Yeah. That's yeah. very good. I, I, that commentary reminds me of poor Michal Murhartig. Michal Murhartig, RIP. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't talk to you about that. You're a way, sure, yeah. The, yeah, fucking great man. Where it is 90s, early 90s? I'm not asking Google, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think so, that. yeah. I actually stumbled upon a video where he's making a sandwich. That went viral around the world, yeah. It's fucking I, fantastic. come home late at night. Yeah. Perfect. I always think it's okay to have a sandwich. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. The br- the, I, most, uh, when he goes on about the ham, I like proper ham. <laughs> My claim to fame with Michal Amor Hurtig was I was at a house party yeah. with his daughter one time. Go away. Yeah. Dirin. Dirin. And she's the girl who used to uh, sit beside him um, and give him the notes as he was... I seen a snippet. That yeah. Was, yeah, I know the girls. She was so, yeah. with him side by side all down through the years at all the matches. Like, Go away. What a great... Like, so we'll talk. Will we talk about GA? We talk about yeah, GA? yeah. Let's like, talk with GA yeah, again. Just like as we're talking about uh, Michal passing there, probably one of the one thing I like about GA is, you know, most sports you'll play. Like if you play basketball, like mm. you, you know, you'll play it in your prime years, and then you don't play it, and you might drift from it. Mm. You might watch it, stuff like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But you might like it's it's an it's it's unlikely that you'll be as dedicated to the sport as you were. When you were playing, but I think with GA, I think there's so many facets to it. Yeah. Like even in, in in our own community here now, like I see all these former great. Like there's a a guy in our community, he he's been in the highest, the highest position you can be, an All Ireland senior hurling winning medal. Mm. Barry Murphy from Scarif in, in Clare. He he's um, he's uh, living in the in the same parish as me, and his yeah. son goes to school with my son. But like he's back there now down in the pitch with the under 14s or the under 16s and he's still playing for Killavullen yep. in, in his like in his 40s and stuff like that. And his his missus is, is Claire is involved with the with the underages as well. She's involved in the same teams I'm in, involved in. And uh, now my wife is involved and I see all the parents involved and they're just it just and then going to the match then last Sunday Cork were playing Limerick in, in, in Croke Park in the semi-final of the Ireland going up I, I met another person who is involved in the in the match and they're taking all their kids up and when I was above in the big tree just outside Croke Park having a pint with uh, all our crew from Ballyclaw mm. uh, I saw one of Dil- or one of uh, Harvey's school buddies mm. uh, r- running around the place yeah. and I was just like it doesn't end like the GA doesn't end and Michal Amar Hurtig was a fucking he was a, he was a bridge I f- always felt he was a bridge from the common man to to the 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 the, the, the stars mm. the, the, like because and even the stars like the like the Henry Shefflins the 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 fucking Sean Ogo Halpines of this world they all talked to him and he had to come in touch with them yeah and, yeah yeah he was he's he, yeah he was amazing he was amazing and he gave he gave his life to it as well like oh yeah hundred percent but you hit a good point I think yeah, GA is just in the fabric of our societies and it just it defines uh, I, I shouldn't really define anyone to their totality of a person but it does mean a lot to everyone doesn't it. You know? Well, I was in I was in the sauna yesterday now, right? And uh, it is, but it is changing. Are you going to the sauna as gym work? No, this is my recovery work. I do recovery on the same day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in the sauna yesterday, right? And I was in there. And do you know who was in there now? It was a next an ex teammate of both you and I? Okay. Dave Ahern. 
Oh, brilliant. Door is what yeah. his nickname. Geez, he was a fantastic underage player. Oh. If I could just tell you how good he was, he, like, he was as good as anyone. He was as... And uh, do you know what about him as well? So humble. Yeah. He was always humble. I actually always like like I remember I remember him underage being unbelievable, but I remember that he just kind of stopped playing for. A, no, what I will say to that, no, Dave won't mind me saying. I remember one game he wore a baseball hat backwards. <laughs> so how humble can you be? Well, I'm talking about humble off the pitch. Like yeah. if you're talking to him, you're, geez, you did you did great there, Dave. You got fucking six six. Yeah. He'd never be blowing about yeah, what yeah. he did because he'd often put up fucking huge scores but he wouldn't be boasting about his scores no or, no he was like, never like that but we, yeah I often walked around the place with a fucking my baseball on back, hat on backwards <laughs> as well um, but to play a game with a baseball hat backwards I thought it was, it was it was pretty bold but he could back it up though he could back it up yeah he, did he play for Cork he underage I actually don't think he did you know but he should have had he was he was outrageous talent like I just can't like if there was a Maradona in GA underage like this lad was just he was very very good yeah. powerful strong yeah. she's super quick uh, I remember his dad. His dad was a legend, and we used to have a. If there was a free in round, for anywhere from we'll say the I don't know forty yards out or whatever like that, he'd look at his dad. and dad would either give him the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Thumbs up was a point. Thumbs down was a goal. And I still remember it. And everyone, yeah, everyone could know. But like, if 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 um, Shawnee was his dad's name, he was a legend. And if, if Shawnee put his thumbs down, that means go for a goal. And Dave would score a goal. Everybody would know is is going for a goal. And he would still hit it with so wow. much power and pace. Yeah, it was just, it was brilliant. It was great times. I just always think back to the lads that trained us underage, the likes of uh, Shawnee. She's the amount of time. R.I.P. Shawnee. Yeah, the amount of time to put into it. Like, you just have to fucking, you're and so respectful a, of it. That, and, it and, that's lo- that, and that's lovely because that kind of feeds into what I was saying there earlier on. That's what it is. Your dad takes you and then your dad, and then I, like I feel incumbent to take my kids. Yeah. And I want to, and do, and why do we want to do it? Because like I do say, I, it's it's a cultural thing, you know, and it's it was my upbringing and I feel that my friends now are, you know the same friends that I've had since childhood. But I kind of think hundred percent. I think it's a way of holding on to the past as well and yeah. remembering what, what's important for us. Yeah. Because you know, because at the end of the day, you're influenced by your culture, your fucking geographical location. We're born in Ireland. Luckily. Yeah, luckily, and we are. Uh, we've this fucking affinity towards GA. We grew up with it. We made friends through it. We built connections through it. I think we want to. Long but it is there. dissipating in society. I definitely see it because I, I, to get back to Dave there, right? So Dave, he's in the army now, twenty five years, yeah. right? He was a, like, like just a lo- like I love, like I just a lovely fella. I, I like because uh, we were inside and we were, got chatting, and the last time I'd met Dave was ten years ago when I was the manager of the junior A team. Remember we got to the North yeah. final, we yeah. lost to Kilshanik. And Dave was on the panel that time, and, yeah. I, and we were just talking about Jay, and he was like, "Oh, I haven't played since then. Now you know, I haven't played mm. since then." You know, I fucking gave enough to it, and he he'd given enough to it. And I said, I'd say him. I said, I'm only getting back involved now because of my kids. And um, I was asking him about his own kids, and he was like, um, Yeah, I brought them along now. I brought them along, and uh, do you know, it wasn't for them. Uh, so they were more into taekwondo and athletics and all this yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I, in my own head, I was like, That's total. That's a cool parent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're not forcing your child to do anything. Yeah. Um, a really cool parent. But then I was also thinking it's a shame It's because, like, you know, I am forcing my kids to go, like, <laughs> whether they like it or not, uh, they're going. But they love it, so yeah. that's okay. But, like, what I thought was interesting was the things he named out. He named out Taekwondo. Yeah. He named out... Uh, what, he named out Taekwondo. He named out Gymnastics. And it was another unusual sport that's escaping my mind now. Is that like judo or something similar lines? No, because taekwondo was one of them, yeah. which wouldn't have been around anyway when we were around. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Source of, and I was just like, that's why it's different now. There was less choice. Yeah. There was le- like you had Gaelic games. If you wanted to play soccer, there was no soccer team in Ballyclaw. You know, your. But there's actually a recent study of that actually kids that partake in a whole host of different activities when they're younger. And don't specialise in a certain sport like GA. They actually turn out to be well-rounded, better athletes, uh, better athletes, yeah. and actually better at their specialised yeah. sport. And like that's like so. What we've done with, for example, with our Harv now, right? And our Harv won't, you know, probably won't amount to anything spectacular in in the field of sport because he's autistic and he's got like you know he finds it difficult to uh, to pick things up faster than other kids. But could be a stat man. He could, he he'd be a great stat man. Um, or he could but at the same time we're still giving him every single opportunity and I'm trying to get him into other things I'm bringing him into soccer we're starting him in athletics now soon but think about it this kind of it's a tiny 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 amount of the population actually turn out to be really good athletes isn't it yeah. so I mean like we always on it it's a journey it's a friendship make it's a friendship make it's him into a corner back boy. make him into a stubborn a fucking sticky, sticky corner, corner back. back all you have to do is to be able to hand pass that ball out it's the concentration he finds it hard to concentrate but anyway my point, my point being is 
when we were young, it was we went to the pitch in Ballyclough. Yeah. We went training with our classmates and that was it. And then at home we might watch something on the television if there was a if we were lucky if the Monday night Italia soccer was on, we might watch that. And then the next week we'd be Rud Hullet and Van Basten playing soccer in school, but for no one else. In school before, during and after school. And then we'd be hurling in football. Um but now the, and because our par- your parents didn't have the money to cart you and your brothers off to three or four different things. Nowadays, it's a totally different kettle of fish. It's like most houses have two cars. There's like social media is bombarding fucking everybody. Oh, you need to do this. You need this to be a good parent. You need to do this to 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 fucking have a bigger dick. I'm oh, sorry, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like it's like you're just being bombarded with all this stuff. And I think the choice out there is. Um, Whilst it is great, it does dilute the numbers that the GA used to attract. Mm. And I think there are players probably slipping through the cracks that would have before stuck with Ga longer. So I think it's more incumbent on the GA to fucking look at that and go, OK, we're up against these things. How can we attract people more in to the, into the games so that we can build on our culture? And I think a big thing with that would be to, to look at all these beautiful fucking non-nationals that are coming in and settling in our country and try to do integrate them in a little better you know because they're yeah. they're big numbers like yeah. you know um, no I agree wholeheartedly with that and like yeah there's huge variation in sports but the good thing about that though I, I find and probably you found as well a lot of our friends stopped playing sport because they lack, lacked interest in GA and there was no other avenue for them to go to mm. whereas now if you don't like GA well then go to athletics mm. play tennis play golf there's a whole host of different yeah. jiu-jitsu MMA everything everything's there whereas before we grew up you don't like GA well you're not playing sport so unfortunately that's the way it was it was you know well if you wanted to do something you had you you had to re like you probably had to travel to do it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you wanted to swim, if you wanted to go swimming, you had to travel into Mallow to go swimming. If you wanted to do competitive swimming, you'd have had to go up the country to wherever, like you know, yeah. to that one pool or that we had in the whole of the country yeah. that you could train in. It's uh, all there now for them. It's all there now, you know. And uh, look, it's good, it's bad, but I just think that you have to move with the times, and I, I think sometimes the GA is not looking at that properly. Like this fucking GA go carry on like mm. is a great example of it. Yep. Like all the matches that Cork were behind it in paywalls this year, um, and it what that's what that's doing the knock on effect what that's doing directly is it's stopping those young kids that are running around with their 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 friends in bars as their dads are fucking having a pint on a fr- on a Sunday watching a match. It's stopping them being exposed to that culture. Yeah, and uh, it's like. I stayed up last night now watching the, the Euros with my uh, with my Harvey Jan, right? He's seven. He's never watched a full match, but I knew that he might stay up if he, or he'd watch it because he'd have to stay up late. I was chatting to him this, yeah. mor- this morning. He's better analysis than us. Better analysis than us. Watched yeah. the whole thing, and now we're all game ball to watch the... Um, the final... Oh, come on, Spain. Oh, come on, Spain. Oh, my God. We'll move on to, we'll move on to Spain oh. there now. We'll move, on to, we'll move on to soccer, a sachet out of GA. We'll get back to GA anyway, but look, just want to say, actually, before we move on from GA, I was at that match. I was at the Cork Hurling match last weekend in Dublin, and it was... Actually, one lads, our chairman, t- um, rang me. Um, he had a ticket for me. He was listening to this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, um, he offered me a ticket to the, to, the, to the match. Well, I was on to him looking for a ticket now for the All-Ireland. If you get one, we should go together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like fucking... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, no, busy that day. <laughs> no, yeah, watching yeah, the Euros. So, so there we go. We might think we can out to one or two people listen. Like, 100 you know? quid. 100 quid now if you want to go to the All Ireland final and sit down. It's a lot of money, man. It's 100 quid. Yeah. 100 to ki- oh, okay. So okay. if you want to if you, if you want to go with your son, uh, you know, to the All Ireland this year, if I wanted to go up with Harv, it's going to cost just to get in the door 200 notes. Yeah. You're if going to you drive up, drive down. And on our hundred notes, yeah, right. So to drive up and drive down with with tolls, probably sixty to seventy quid. Stop for a bite to eat, to eat on the way up, and another thirty quid. Mm, there, yeah. that's like fucking, that's a hundred quid. So that's yeah. that's three hundred quid. Then you're up there, you're buying a hat, a headband. Yeah, you're buying a program. What's that? Fifty quid? You would say all that or miscellaneous? Yeah, another fifty quid. That's three fifty. And then fucking after the match, you're going to stop and get something to eat as well. Yeah. Unless you bring your sandwiches, yeah. which I t- I tend to do. But I brought sandwiches last week, and I still stopped on the way down because yeah. I'm a fat bastard. And um, I think you would st- like it's a it's a long day out. Like last week, now we were gone. Uh, I left at here at half eight, and I was home at nine o'clock. 
Yeah, it's long. I heard the drive times are fucking five half hours up and stuff. It, the drive times are, are, I think, but it's grand if you if, if you're. It's it's all a part of it, though. It's the excitement yeah. and it's nonstop talk. Like, it's like when fucking people talk to me about comedians as well. Like, you know, they're like, "Oh, your job must be terrible, Jesus Christ Almighty! You're on the road late at night." Fucking hell, you never... That's just part of it. You're just driving, like... Do you drive to work yourself, mate? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. True enough. It depends how you fucking fill that time, isn't it? Yeah. While you're driving. If exactly. You're not, if you're not next to some gimp. Yes, that's it. So we'll go together, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Cork beat Limerick. Uh, unreal atmosphere altogether. Limerick were favourites. I didn't think Cork... I was going up expecting not to win. There was a little bit of, little bit of hope... All right, you know, we had beaten them earlier in the year, but Limerick were going for immortality. I felt that they were like, and I had been at the All Ireland final a couple of years ago when they absolutely annihilated mm. us. Yeah. And they were like, the game was over after like fucking 10 minutes. And um, so I had that fucking damage inside my body, like, and I was just like, oh, is this going to be the same? But they were fucking awesome. Yeah, they were brain. They just, they actually just looked better. They just look better. They're what did it look like from the television? Because like sometimes when you're watching a match live, right, you don't analyze. Like I just yeah. got lost. I swear, the roar, man. Yeah, I just wonder you'd miss all right. The TV is the TV, but you probably see more. Sometimes I think you see more TV. on the TV. But then again, you're seeing all the runs after ball that we're not exposed to either. Yeah. Uh, I, for me, just Cork looked more dominant. They looked better. I thought the referee did a few decisions, as you know, were, were poor, so we could have won by more. I thought Limerick were always chasing. Uh, still, though, towards the end of the game, they could equalise. They missed a couple of chances they could have brought them out. But I think Cork fully deserved to win. I thought, I thought they were just better. And yeah. I just... Uh, yeah, they just looked phenomenal all over. So it was just, uh, yeah, a joy to watch. Yeah. That was amazing, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and I, so I wouldn't have had that, I I was nervous the whole way through the game. I wasn't allowing myself to feel that Cork were going to win at any stage. But I think I, as I think that was from the wounds. I was in the upper Cusick, and one thing that you mentioned, all right, that I will say, is if I ever got to buy a season ticket in Croke Park, I would go upper Cusick, down near the front of the upper, if you know what I mean. Okay, yeah. Right? The fucking runs. Yeah. The the passages of play were unbelievable. Yeah, I even yeah. said, I was texting our chairman there now, Jason, as well. Uh, I, I sent him a text on Monday going, and I've not, and Jason, I'm glad you listened to the podcast, and I haven't asked you for a ticket all year now, Jason, and I'm a long-standing clubman, and I think you're a very, I think you were a great footballer, you could kick with both legs, and a uh, great hurler as well, Jason. Are you, are you sucky up a bit? Are you fucking... Mind look, look, just someone's a bit desperate, here. right? I'm someone's spit- a bit desperate. What I what the relationship I have with Jason here. is is genuine. We have friendship dating back to we were five, six years of age. I what don't I have do- that, Jason, and I won't look. I won't purport. To, I'm I'm not going to go here for the softy, softy touch. Mine guy's going to go with sentimentality. Look, I go to all the games. I ha- I and I and I'm a fully paid up member of a club that I don't even exist in. I'm, I'm not even living in the parish anymore. The, there was are, a, you, are you signed up to? The, I'm signed up for the fledge member. Excuse no. you, Carnegie. Yeah, just and I'm wondering. sure you were. Uh, we made a discussion about Kilavon or Betty Claw, and I think you were edging towards Kilavon. Well, I live in Kilavon, and but I'm a. Con- so that puts you stop. Why don't you get your ticket off? Uh, some Kilavon. I'm not a club member of Kilavon. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, and yet, Game you support set. you support Kilvorn against Ballyclaw. Uh, no, I, I, well, if, if well, Kilvorn well, well, were playing Ballyclaw, mm-hmm. right? Yes, I would be neutral. I'd See? be Switzerland. See, that's devastation. Like, why well, you should be your Ballyclaw well, man, born Barney Barney for Ballyclaw. Straight away, you should be Ballyclaw. Well, my sons play for Kilvorn. And how can we not a member of Kilvorn if your if your sons they are, are. Part? they are? But you're not. I'm sure, I don't play. So what, you don't play a Betty Clyde or yet you remember a Betty Clyde? Yeah, but I played with what, Betty Clyde. What side are you on, Gordon? Is you Betty Clyde or you kill the I'm side of good. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously um, Jason would be giving the ticket to me. Listen, I, Jason, as I said, haven't been, haven't been on to you at all. I've been a good club member. And Jason, has, Jason came to my show on the Everman as well, so he knows a fucking good thing when he sees it. All right? And Jason, you are a good thing. Was he at your show? He, uh, he came to the one in, in the Everman in, That's very in good. January. That's very good, yeah. Sure, you that's enough done for you, so. Well, surely, like. Listen, and, J- and Jason, I'm willing to play 10% under face value. Fuck, do you know what, Jason? <laughs> I'll give you face value. I'll give you face value for the ticket. I don't want you. To, I don't want to make any look face value. Well, I call. I know, and I know where you live. <laughs> I know where you live, Jason. I'm going to go over there now after this podcast. Should knock on the door. Hand put, out. Put up the tent. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be there until I get my fucking ticket. Remember they used to do that in Campo <laughs> side Easons and stuff like that when the Harry Potter books were being sold and things like that? I did one time for an Oasis gig in Mallow, myself and Danny, our, our friend, uh, we were in the nightclub in Millerise. Do you remember Millerise in Mallow? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I we, we, we went in there, it was a Friday night and Oasis tickets were going on sale at 7am 
in HMV in Cork. <laughs> and um, 7 a.m., like, which was like, what the fuck? They're opening up at 7 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the, cl- the nightclub was over at 2 o'clock, and we got burgers and chips, and we drove up to Cork. <laughs> <laughs> We weren't even first in the line. There was a big line for Oasis tickets. Jeez. That's how you are. No, did you just go online and you're like, D-d-d-d. but it was, again, it was all part of it. Like, I yeah. Think, a lot of these old traditions, I know you have to move with the times, but there was something fucking lovely about that. There's more human, it's more human in well, contact. Like. Everything's more convenient you now, but we're being fecked by the likes of Ticketmaster. They were opening up the prices to a fucking outrageous amount. Like, yeah. those tickets for those gigs are just. Dude, some tickets are over a hundred quid now. Uh, it's completely right. If you look at uh, any gig now, it's an art. It's just, yeah. There are huge prices. We, like, where did we go there? No, we went to Rod Stewart there in um, in Paris. Was he any good, Rod? I didn't fucking... I thought he was a bit of a dickhead, man. <laughs> why, 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 why did you get He annoyed attention? me. He fucking annoyed me, right? He's 79, okay? Yeah. Now, his voice was amazing, mm. right? Still has the voice, okay? But he's like Joe Biden now, like the way he's... Like, he's obviously more limber to Joe Biden. But could you imagine someone like... He's, tra- he's there trying to do the... If you think I'm sexy, you know, trying to do the dancing yeah. that he was able to do 30 years ago yeah. to that, right? Okay, I get it. That's what you're famous for. You're continuing to try and do that. But it does, it's not a good look in a 79-year-old Just jump friend. in a wheelchair and just no, do it No, he could have, I would have, so that's not, and, and and to be fair, that's not why I didn't like it. But now, why I didn't like it, that's adding to it. The tight pants. Right. No. So he had five costume. Uh, there was a few things, right? He had five costume changes. This is the, the first thing that annoyed me, right? Was that he was given out to the audience. <laughs> I kind of like him already. Right. Like, what was he giving out? He was given out to the audience. And <laughs> he was, they, he had five costume changes, right? Yeah. And he was on his second or third costume change and he came out with the hump, right? And he goes, have you just come from a funeral? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I kind of, right? yeah, go ahead. And he's but they probably me. had I, this is my this is what I, like most of them they're his fans they're all his age they're all in their 70s at least 50% of them have had some sort of a hip replacement alright they're all off their face on drugs and they would yeah. have been like fucking like not like med, like medicated like they're all like a lot of them won't see the next decade could be the last concert really it probably was definitely the last concert for 25% of them right and he's like have you just come from a funeral <laughs> You know, and uh, that would was, make me laugh. Now, I'll be I, I kind of at the start, right? It reminded me of, do you know, when we're doing a gig, right? Yeah. And the audience are shit. Yeah. And you can get a shit audience, and it's usually an audience that doesn't know what comedy is, and it's like they don't know how to react. Yeah. They don't know how to react. They're like, come on, we'll go down to the hall there, fucking Johnny Murphy's young fellas, fucking doing a <laughs> shit, and and we'll sit down, and we won't have any drink. We'll have a drink. We'll have a drink afterwards, so we'll go in cold sober from our normal nine to five job. And we'll go in and we'll see what this artistic cunt is up to. <laughs> and like, it's kind of like your family went to one of our gigs. I oh know, my like, God, they were fucking, oh, Jesus Christ. It was like talking to a fucking performer to a couple of chairs. <laughs> there, was, there was no reaction. <laughs> <coughs> They've come around now since. Yeah, well, yeah. They were fairly bad. They crack a smile now, did they? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, I'm in a, when I'm in a big room with lots of people there, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we always believed in them. <laughs> Oh, I remember a few of those gigs. You you tell me your family are coming up. I'll be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, man. Fuck it, hell. Yeah. Usually, um, usually family gives support. Do you notice that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tears of a cloud. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, you're on uh, Rod Stewart. He's giving out. Oh, yes. got the hump. Yeah. So he got the hump. And this, because they, they weren't fucking going, Rod, and taking their fucking knickers off and throwing them on the stage, you know? Because they weren't able to bend down. They, they, <laughs> they weren't physically able like to remove people, the knickers. Like they probably had to have people to take off their nappies when they go home. Like, me and Noel then were up in the bleachers, right? And we had a fucking great time now, I have to say. we had a, we, like, But everyone beside us was just like staring, not even clapping myself. And Noel were like, I intent- intentionally said after every song, I was like, Go on, Rod! <laughs> go on, Rod, boy! I did that because uh, I was getting a laugh off it. Yeah. And he did 25 songs. But by the third t- song or fourth song that I had done that, I was annoying people around me. Do you know what I mean? I was like, you're at a fucking gig, ye cunts. Do you know what I mean? Enjoy yourselves. Do you think they're the type of artists who just want to listen to music, they want to fucking any outward display of dancing or anything like that, just want to listen and enjoy the music for no, what it is? No, they just, I don't know what they were doing there. I think I think people are, are doing stuff as well now just for the sake of, oh, I'll, I'll take, oh, John loves, John loves Elton John. Now we'll book a ticket for that next because Mary said she was at Elton. Yeah. I think it's almost we have to do this now. This is what people do. Mm. It's like before we'd go out to the pub on us on you know three Saturdays a month. Now we just go to a gig 
four times Both experiences. Year. Into, yeah, yeah, yeah. Experiences, which I, is good now. Yeah, yeah, I, they, yeah. I would say that, to be fair now to the people that were sitting around me, I would say that they all liked Rod Stewart. Like, you know, but they were just not, they didn't know how to react at a concert. Now we were up the bleachers and we weren't mad now by no, any... Big, big Crow Cornelius, big, was it? Unreal. Like, are you talking tens of thousands? Uh, so he, this is the other thing. He, uh, so there was, it was 14,000 seater and it was full, right? Oh. And it was a tent, right? But it was, it didn't look like a tent. It, 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 like, it was unreal. Now, the whole setup was so professional. There was steps up into it and everything. I was, when we were walking down into the venue, I counted the tour buses. There was 16 tour buses. Oh. 16 tour buses. And so he had a whole, like, fleet of, a whole fleet of things. His, his whole performance, he had uh, dancers and backup singers who did loads of solo numbers as well. And he had an b- unbelievably talented jazz musician, or a uh, saxophonist. He was fucking brilliant, mm, right? Mm. But he did a few solos as yeah, well. So yeah. he was like, he was, like, it wasn't Rod, like, ba- give me Rod Stewart in his late 30s. He'd have had none of that faff. It would be just Rod with his chest out yeah, yeah. and his leopard skin thing. I felt that there was a lot of faff, unnecessary faff, uh, in it but it was a spectacle now it was a spectacle and I hadn't been to something like this for a while and f- and it was really good the whole thing was really good and it wasn't expensive because we went to Paris but why he annoyed me right was a few reasons was that was the first one he was given out about that then he started being disparaging about where he's going this is the smallest venue I'm playing on tour <laughs> why would he say that yeah and it's a tent I've been in a tent for 40 years <laughs> and I'm like alright okay and he kept saying it and he goes ah are you have you been to a funeral? You know, he was like giving out about the venue, giving out about being, I, I basically, I do bigger venues than this. Yeah, this you is know? beneath me. His ego was out. He kept doing these costume changes, right? So then he'd do like a couple of numbers and then there'd be a costume change. And then while the costume change was going on, the three backing singers would come up and do a fucking Coors number or a fucking oh, Tina yeah. Turner number. They were brilliant. Yeah, they were brilliant, but they weren't Rod Stewart. Yeah, they weren't what people had come to see. Is he just getting the change or just recover? You think? I reckon there was probably fucking a bit of recovery. Like he's fucking seventy nine. Seventy nine is quite old, you know. And I'd say so. Then on his fourth change, he came up, <laughs> right, and he came up in the Ukraine colours, right, and then the screen behind him, the Ukraine flag came flipping. Oh yeah, very good, very right? good, yeah. And he gave this passionate speech about the Ukraine and about the war. And uh, he dedicating this song to Ukraine. I know he purports to be a big Celtic fan, right? Mm. This is how this and this is how I've linked this into a football, into the sports podcast. Mm. He's a huge Celtic fan, right? And Celtic fans across the globe, myself included, you can see it here in my own office, right? Is we're pre, we're pro, we're like free Palestine, or mm. you know. And he didn't mention the Palestinian struggle at all because it's like it's a touchy subject now. Yeah. In in like, and it would directly affect. Directly ticket effect. sales, in it, yeah. ticket potentially, sales. In it, yeah. but he didn't mention it at all. And I was like, Fucking, I, I was, I that that was the straw for me, you know. I roared out at the end of it anyway, Free Palestine. And Noel was like, Yeah, <laughs> you know, but um, that did, and then he continued throughout the night. And then let's see what you think now at the end, right? And Noel backed me up in this, continued on the night then to give out to the audience all the way through. He'd do two or three numbers, wasn't getting the reaction that he wanted. Um, it was late at night as well. Lots of these lads go to bed. Just where I have them sleeping. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a few of them could have died during the concert, for like, God's sake. You know, Rod, you didn't die, but 80 people potentially <laughs> did, you know. And um, given out to them the whole way. And then at the end, he did his number and it was yay. And the audience were, who I didn't think were that bad either, by the way. Yeah. Were, were like, one more tune or whatever the equivalent of that is. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like, encore, encore. And uh, up on the screen came more clapping, please. I might even have it on my phone. Yeah. Right? More clapping, please. So then everybody clapped a little bit more. Yeah. And out came Rod, right? And he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, that's more like it a bit of life. Uh, come on. Come on. <laughs> give me more. He wasn't, he actually was like, come on. And they weren't able to give him any more. <laughs> they were giving him 100%. I fucking love this. They were fucked. Right? So he wasn't happy with it. He did the encore and then just did one. And this went and he didn't get the reaction at, at the end of that song yeah. that he wanted. And he's went, ah, fuck it. And walked off. <laughs> walked off. No, in fairness, yeah. No, well, people paid a lot of money. Yeah. We travelled from fucking Ireland. To see. Now, I, I still think it was a good concert. What do you think of that behaviour? Well, yeah, okay, it's selfish behaviour. I find it humorous, to be honest oh, with you. And humorous. in fairness, you're not seeing a robot. At least he's reacting to it. He's perceived what's happening in it. Yeah. 
Do you know what? So he's not just going through the motions. <laughs> so I kind of like that. So in a way, I find it hilarious that he's berating an audience that probably just, like you said, they can't give anymore. <laughs> a couple of them have died since he started the show. So I, I don't know. I think uh, there's something about uh, realism and, uh, and he, uh, he, he cares. At least you give him that. He must fucking care. No, and I don't really mind about uh, an artist not really uh, going above and beyond in regards to political stuff. Sometimes you're like, oh, shut up. Just play. I'm here to listen to you. Fucking play music. Now, I know you're going to counter that and you're going to say, oh, okay, you're increasing awareness and exposure. Don't for do anything. I was about to get there, but if, you, if you're going to ignore one thing, you probably should ignore everything and, yeah, and just leave it out there. Uh, but in terms of him giving out the, I'd find it hilarious. I would actually, I would well, enjoy like, the I, show I, more. I, I did find, I, now, to be fair, no, we were on holidays. I was stoned. I had a couple of beers in me. <laughs> no. I, 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 I was like, I was loving life. I got lost at one stage when I went down to get a beer and I was like, there was people giving me dirty looks. I was just laughing at them. <laughs> I was looking for Noel. Noel had to come down to get me. <laughs> Hold I'm your a hand. Bring child, up. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I'm a child in, ad, in adult body, you know. Um, and I, but I just was looking and I was just like, I just hope I'm never like I like I I want to be fucking the same as Rod Stewart fucking all over the globe with hundreds of thousands. I wanted to do fucking Parky Queeve at night, do my stand up, right? This is these are the dreams that I'd have at night time, right? And daytime and fucking like and if I ever do get there, if that ever I look sure maybe I maybe I'll only do the set, the high B in Mallow, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that's the do you know you've Got to go with the dreams. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I feel I'm alive. I feel if while I'm alive, let's go for the fucking let's shoot for the stars, right? So if I ever did get there, I'd hate to be perceived the way that he, like he was just. But see, then Noel said a good thing to me. She said he's been a superstar since his teens. Yeah, he's had fucking women throwing themselves at him. He's had people telling him he's amazing. He's had all this, his whole entire, like, his ego is massive. No, it's, he's supposed to be a very nice guy now as well, by the way. Just, mm. this was just, I could, we just kind of caught him on a bad night as well and give him man a break as well. But, like, all this being said, he's had, he's, like, he's been a millionaire all his life. He's never had to worry about a bill. He's a fucking, lo- like, he's got a brilliant family now as well. Goes, does what he wants, eats what he wants, drinks what he wants, does whatever he wants, mm. you know? And everyone tells him he's great. For mm-hmm. w- fucking two hours put that ego at the side of the stage and give the people the, what they want. Yeah, Don't true, true. be berating them for fucking not being able to clap. Uh, they're nearly dead, Rod. <laughs> they're t- they, some people have, they can't, if they clap, they could break the bones in their hands. They have osteoporosis. They're on heavy meds for that. Do you know what I mean, Rod? Don't be such a goal. That's all I'm saying, just for those two. They're, that's my... That's a valid take as well, yeah. You know, just for those, yeah. Set aside your ego. They've paid money. They've travelled... This could be for two hours for two, like, yeah for you know? two hours yeah you can and then come off stage and go oh they were fucking shit one day yeah. we've done that yeah. you and I have done that when we when we did our double act we've often done gigs that were fucking hard as fuck yeah. and we'll make a joke even on stage about it but we'd always give them the beginning the middle and the end and we'd give it unless we were in Tipperary they didn't even know we finished well we that show we did our show yeah. they just wanted more <laughs> and that's could you blame them could you blame him? Maybe the, the critics would say we probably should have had a definite ending to the performance. <laughs> That's what the critics okay, would say. <laughs> Walk off stage. You may, remember, you might come into us in the dressing room. They're, they're still outside waiting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's, like, and we looked in and there was like about 25 or 30 people still waiting for us to go out. And we, <laughs> and we just walked out past the window. See you later. <laughs> Oh. Our show was like about uh, I'd say it was about 45 minutes But I think back at it my life Fucking hell It was 45 minutes And there was a bit of faff In that 40 The first 20 minutes We were We, we used to just fail intentionally like. Oh my god yeah. It got better towards the end But the first early incarnations Of that yeah was absolutely <laughs> Fucking dire stuff all here um, oh. So Okay so we're moving on Lastly to we're, the, 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 like I suppose the European final European final Yeah European final And it's on Sunday and it's the big game, and you fancy England? Yeah, I actually fancy them to absolutely capitulate. Do you? Yeah, I think Spain. Well, look, it's a final to be close in the way finals are. Um, I Spain by two. Yeah, I can. And I can only hope. Yeah. Uh, so I watched the England match last night, and I just think that they have. And this is honestly now, right? I don't want them to win. Okay, I fucking I don't want them to win. Full stop. But I've thought they've been dreadful in all their games, in all of their games, up until. Uh, last night and I thought that they were only okay then last night but they're all saying they, oh they turned the corner mm. they turned the corner Foden became a man yeah it's you know all hyperbole this, you know so like they played a Dutch team that were playing 
what happened to Holland, in my opinion, is do you know the fella that got taken off injured? Memphis, yeah. Memphis to fight. Yeah. He's their he's their Roy Keane. He's their spiritual leader. Yeah. He's their like it would be like fucking Roy Keane getting taken yeah, he's, It he's would be like class, yeah. Jude Bellingham coming off injured for yeah. for England. And it it hurt them psychologically. Mm. And they were they retreated into a shot because they were playing really well prior to that. Yeah, he got the goal, yeah, he got injured in it. And then that penalty decision, which was dubious. Uh, you don't think it was a penalty? I don't think it was a penalty. There, there must be, like, Richie Sadler, in fairness to Richie, like, he, there has to be physical contact. Like, your man's going to block the ball, like, and then, like, Harry Kane took the shot, make contact with the ball, ball's going over the bar, and then Kane's follow through, makes contact with his studs. I mean, you can't, like, that's... That's true. That's not, like, it's not intentional. It's not a foul. And not every free has to be intentional either, by the way. But it's just, there's nothing to it. I just can't and see how that's a penalty. And also, his assessment, another assessment, which I thought was very, very true as well, Jude Bellingham should have been sent off. Oh, I missed that. What, was, what, been what happened there? Wait, so he got, a, he got a yellow card in the first five to ten minutes. I remember that, yeah. Right? And then, uh, what, about 25 minutes to go or 30 minutes to go? Yeah. There was a, 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 the ball was over by the line, okay, yeah. and the ref blew for a free for Holland. Yeah. And Bellingham was like, fuck's sake, it was an English free, right? And the referee went this way and Jude Bellingham kicked the ball away. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. that's a technical, yeah. like he... That's a tech like like kick the ball away like didn't just tap it away no fuck the ball away like yeah that's but that's that's a, that's a technical yellow card that's two yellow cards but you know that that referee was caught for bribing uh, twenty five years ago or something like that there was a bribing allegation and he was he was convicted of bribing and he oh. somehow managed to get back to the highest level in sport that makes no sense and was in charge of that match and he had beef with Jude Bellingham in Borussia Dortmund. Uh, three years ago when Jude Bellingham was a 17 year old mm. playing with Borussia Dortmund um, basically there was a match coming up and they lost the, the match and Jude Bellingham afterwards said something about the ref and his corruption from the years when he got caught mm. uh, with the bribe and then Bellingham got fined f- uh, 40,000 right yeah. for um, not respecting the refs and stuff like that Yeah. so they were saying then the conspiracy then last night is like he didn't send them off because uh, of the fucking the, the controversy that they've had I just can't believe a man who's just credibility shot gets to fucking referee the in second semi-final. highest game of the year in sure that makes no sense yeah uh, makes he, no sense he was actually he wasn't great either actually he, no. yes he wasn't great he wasn't so, you know, he wasn't but so uh, hopefully and hopefully we go for Spain 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 so look we have to, oh, I'm trying to turn this fucking thing on here now are the GA semi-finals on this weekend the football is on this weekend yeah, isn't it? yeah so Could let's have fancy? a look Mm. So look, oh geez, a great result. I've never even spoke about that. The Galway knock out Dublin. The mighty Dubs, they're gone. Fair play to Galway. It's their first win in, uh, against the Dublin side in the Championship for how many fucking decades? An enormous amount of time. And they look good as well. Did you see that game? Yeah, I seen they the highlights. I seen the highlights, yeah. Do, you see, what I, don't, what I like about the Galway at the moment now is, and they haven't had it all year, they've had a lot of injuries earlier in the year, is that Comer and Walsh are now fully fit. Yeah. And they've had they've blooded all these young fellas throughout the championship. They're battle hardened. And they're battle hardened. Yeah. And they've they bl- they they sorry they bloodied the young fellas during the league. Yeah. When they they had no forwards. And yeah. Not, they're after one or two are after emerging as 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 fucking ballers. Like, uh, who are they playing in the semi final? So we have Kerry. We have Galway. We have fucking Arma. Arma. She's your team, Arma. I love Arma. They they were your kind of dark horses initially, weren't they? Yeah, they were my dark horses by back in the group stages. I think. I still, I'm still going to stick with him. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be... Uh, so we've got Kerry and Arma. Mm, I have to... I'll, mm, you see, I'll go with Kerry. Close. Could be close. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be putting any points either way, like, you know, before you look at me like that, trying to get You wouldn't to. be putting any points either way? No, like, you... I, I, I won't I, bet I, on that, so... Yeah, but I knew you were going down that road. Yeah. Okay, Galway and Donegal. I would probably go with... Close game, 50-50. I'd be happy to... Who would you go for? I'm asking you. Uh, I'll tell you what, right, I'll give you my guess, but we let's do a header heart to see who has the guess first. That because it gives away information if you give the guess. But then you see you could be double bluffing as well. Yeah, well there you are. Alright, so okay. uh, header harp. Okay, I got a harp. So if you get it right, if if harp comes up, you get to choose, I get what, to choose yeah. what happens, right? Okay. You want a harp? Okay, that's you win. Okay, so who do you think will win? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think Tony I think Gal- it's gonna be very uh, Tony Gal- Galway. I think it'll be a very close game. I, I, I think both those games are going to be really, really close. I actually think Donegal is snake it. Okay. Yeah, I think Donegal is snake it. Okay. I mean, after Galway, after a triumphant win over Dublin, I think, I don't know, I think to be a slight, well, it, it can't be a slight come down, coming into an All-Ireland semi-final, but the next prize is going to be an All-Ireland final. Patrick Joyce is a, is, is a wily character And he's well. a wily character as well. I'm just going to go, I just think Donegal will take that. 
Yeah. Very close. I pointed to it. I'd be happy. Well, to, I'd be the same as you. I'd be like I like you're you're. I'll be you. You think Kerry and Armagh? I think Armagh. But I I I'm I'm not going to put a a bet on against. The f- well, if you think ra- if you think uh, Armagh, I mean, uh, well, I do I do think they're Armagh, but I'm not willing to wager ten euros, right? Um, on it uh, without a point differentiation because if you go to Paddy Powers, there's like plus four, like that's what it is, like you know. I mean, we'll, so, sk- we'll skip on from that, so you know. So, um, but I would take Armagh. I take Armagh plus two. Armagh plus two. Yeah. Armagh plus so, two. So like uh, Kerry minus two. No, I thought we were skipping on from that. There was no points. We just yeah, but I'm just saying to you. That's yeah, what I know I would you. Do. Like, oh, I know you take I, it. Yeah, yeah, but I said we'd move swiftly on from that game. It's good for you to have that information, my guy. Great it's to have it. You to have that I will move along from it. Arma minus two. Kerry Clifford. Yeah, Arma. Sure we, call it, we should just probably call it Clifford. I give you a point. I give you a point. One point. Ah, for God's sake, my guy. I give you a point. Like I've no wiggle room there. Like where can I split you, the you difference? Actually, you have like, a point. Where can I split the difference? Give me one point five. One point five. I tell you what I do. We'll go to the early game, and I'll give you call in the early game. Let me call it. Is this? Yeah, I'd be happy with either side. I'll take any side there. I actually think Donegal win, but if you are happy, if you think if you want to go with Donegal, I'd be happy to say bow down, and I'll give you this. Yeah, that is more of a fifty-fifty game. I do think. I do think that the Armagh Kerry game. Just going back to the Armagh Kerry game for a second, right? And and I'll consider the other one there in a second. I do think that like my dark horse. Mm. Like I think Armagh, if all things being equal. And if they click, and they haven't lost technically this year yet, mm. they lost on penalties. But like in the open, yeah, indoor, open, yeah, open play, training. they haven't technically lost a game in championship, right? Uh, um, I, 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 they're just my dark horse, and I think their benches are savage. But all things being equal, it's like the, every, most people want to say Kerry are going to win that game. Yeah, I to mean, be fair now. You'd to be have fair, to, like, yeah. right? <laughs> and. Um, but I, I still, I, I, I'm sticking with our man on that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, um, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do plus one. I just, just, because I, I think Kerry, the smart money was going to go on Kerry. Yeah, my, of course. My yeah. heart is going with our man there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More so than anything else. But I think with Donegal and Galway, I've seen, I, I, I saw that Galway Dublin game. They were fucking unreal. They were unreal. Uh, and uh, Donegal have lost against Corker. And I, didn't, didn't, I was at that game. Yeah. And they looked tired. Yeah. But I. I'm going to go Donegal and I'll tell you why. First of all, that game against Cork didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah, of course not. Because Clare had won the week before and pretty much Clare were, were doomed. So that that game didn't matter uh, and because they, they had to play Clare. Uh, and second of all, they had fucking won the Ulster Championship, a war of attrition. And he, I know, I read his autobiography, he would have left those boys off. Mm. And gone, off you go, let air out of the tyre, go drink and go fucking... Go wild for a week. Yeah, we'll fucking regroup. We'll fucking get it going, and he would have had them training hard yeah, it's through like the group stage. A hard block of training, yeah, fatiguing the legs, yeah. So, so that they'll be fresh for the stage. Mm. So, he does not, he does not spend one second of the day not thinking about yeah. what's going on. So, for that and for that only, because I do think, with all that being said. I think Donegal... I think it's a close game. I think no matter which way you look at it, it's going to be on the day. It'll be 50. So 50, 50. Because you could make arguments, because Joyce is also yeah. absolutely psychotic about it. Yeah. They're both psychotic managers, and I love that. Yeah. I fucking love that. And like you, Joyce on the, on the line, he's pumped up, and Comer and Walsh are back now, and, and they're fucking awesome. Like. Yeah. So it's 50-50. I, I'm going to take Donegal because I have I love Jim McGuinness. So let's do it. Okay. Ten. We've shaken hands on it. Shaking hands. Done. Yes. <sighs> Imagine if I win around 25 euros. Yeah, I'd be absolutely devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't come back. Never again to be seen. Uh, lads, thank you so much for listening. This uh, this week's episode uh, was brought to you by Nobody. If you want to get involved in the podcast, send me an email and you can become a sponsor on the podcast. And sponsors get unbelievable uh, shout-outs on the, on, the, on the podcast. So if you want to be shouted out every week for a hefty fee, Get in contact. If you don't want to do that and you want to sign up to the Patreon, do it. The link is in the description. Love ye. Stay in by the wall. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. Goodbye. I'll see you in my dreams.